Thank you, guys. It's my support team. My test, my, I got a testimony this morning. I'm thankful for a, a godly wife. Oh, that wasn't good enough. It's, this is my wife we're talking about. I said, I'm thankful for a godly wife. That's right. See, you don't know. You don't know the price she pays to bring you the word she brings on Sunday nights and things like that. I see the hours of study. I'm not, you know, I can brag on her. You can't brag on yourself. You know what I'm saying? But you can brag on somebody else a little bit. And I know the hours she puts in. I know. And so you, 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 you as a church, I am blessed. I am blessed beyond measure to have her as my wife. You're blessed to have her as a, as a church pastor. I believe that. Pastor's wife. That's right. That's right. I'm thankful for my family. Amen. I'm thankful for so much things. There's so much stuff to be thankful for this morning. It's so good. An unthankful church is an unholy church. We need to stay thankful. Amen. It's good. I got a word for you. It's good. It's from the Lord. I know it is. It's called finding your purpose. Finding your purpose. How many, how many wants to find your purpose? How many has found your purpose? Amen? Not as many. Come on now. Find your purpose. How many is excited about that? That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Find your purpose. Now, if I had probably one question that's asked me most as a pastor, it would be, what's my purpose? I really would love to know my calling. I just want to be used by God. I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot, and, and it's good. It's a good question. Don't quit asking them. It's okay. Don't quit seeking. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be open unto you. But I'm convinced if they had a place like the DMV where you go to get your license, if they had it to where they would hand out your purpose for life, there would be a, 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 a line several miles long. You know, it really would, because people generally want to know the purpose that God has for them. I believe that, don't you? And as I was studying, I was thinking about this. I was thinking, we've got such a mixed congregation. We do. We, we, we've got, I mean, if I started shouting out denominations that you were raised in, man, we would cover a lot. <laughs> we would. It's amazing that we all get along. It has to be the love of God. It has to be the Holy Spirit. I mean that. Because, I mean, we've got, we got, we got every denomination. I'm telling you, we have so many denominations under this roof. But we all get along because of the love of, of, the, of the Lord, the love of the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking about not only just how, many, how diverse our congregation is, but I was thinking about all the seasons that people are in. People are in different seasons of their life, different seasons of their walk. There's, there's tons of seasons in, in life. You don't stay a baby. Now, wives, don't look at your husbands, okay? You don't stay a baby. And you don't stay a teenager. Wouldn't that be terrible? Oh, man, could you imagine if we all just matured to teenager level and that was it? I love you, teenagers. Don't get me wrong. But could you imagine a whole church just matured just to teenager level? There's so many seasons. There's different, different levels, different, different areas that you walk in. Life isn't always on top of the mountain. It's not. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. It's not always on top of the mountain. But you know what? I got an encouraging word. It's not always in the valley either. It's not always in the valley. And if it is always in the valley, then we need to pray and cast some things off of you. Just real. Just the way it is. And as, as I was thinking about these things, and I, wrote, I was studying, and we got, turned to Ecclesiastes with me. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. That's it. It's good. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, one, verse 1 through 8. If you're there, say praise the Lord. I'll give it just one more second. Not too many praising going up. I got to get you to praise the Lord somehow, right? If you're there, say praise the Lord. You're getting better. All right. Here we go. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says this. For everything there is a season. A time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. 
a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet, all men say amen. Yeah. In a time to speak, all the women say amen. There you go. See? I picked equally picker. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Seasons. There's every season there mentioned. We, you know, Solomon was a wise man. Jesus, uh, the Bible says that he was the wisest man that ever lived. God gave him abundant amounts of wisdom. He was, he, was, he was so smart and so much wisdom in him that people would come from everywhere all over the world just to hear him talk. They would come to hear him talk about birds. That's crazy, isn't it? But God gave him all that kind of wisdom. It's in the Bible. Read it. That he, had, he just had tremendous amounts of wisdom that God gave him. But I'm telling you, if you'll ask the Lord, he'll give you wisdom too. And, and as I was thinking about our purpose, everything, every decision, everything that we do, we must have we must have wisdom based in it. And as the Holy Spirit was giving me this, he, he showed me this too. He said, you know, last week you preached on the Holy Spirit and it was lively. It was, you had, it was good. You could feel the energy. And this week you read a scripture about what they say at the funeral. <laughs> but I can't help it. That's what the Lord gives me. You know, if you don't like the message, stick around. You'll get well-rounded in the word of God. Right? Yeah. If you don't like the weather in Tennessee, stick around. It'll change. If you don't like the season you're in in your life right now, just wait. It'll change. It'll change. I believe that. There's a few things. That's quick things I want to show you. Three quick things I want to show you. Then there's three bigger things. First thing I want to show you is one thing you understand no matter what season you're in. Whatever season you're in. Seasons will change, but God's purpose for your life never changes. His purpose for your life never changes. Even though the seasons will change, His purpose never changes. When you were born with a purpose, you're going to die with that same purpose. I believe that. To glorify the Lord, don't you? Not too many people believe that. It's quiet. You think about it. And even though, here's the second thing, even though life is full of seasons, here's one thing you really need to get a hold of this morning. It's quick. This is going to be quick. The Lord is the doorkeeper of the seasons. The Lord is the doorkeeper of the seasons. He don't say a season's over until he shuts the door. He don't say another season's opening until he opens the door. And you need to get a hold of that. Me, I need to get a hold of that. As a Christian, as a follower, if you want to really fulfill the purpose that God has for you in your life, you need to understand He's the doorkeeper. Seasons change, seasons go. And the only thing that separates a season is a door, and Jesus is the doorkeeper. See, I think so many Christians waste so much time and so much energy grabbing hold of the door handle, and they're shoving, trying to get it open. Just back off and let it happen. Let go and let God do it. Amen? You don't have to do everything. He'll do it. Isn't that good? Life becomes a lot less stressful when you understand Jesus is my doorkeeper. You're thinking about that. And that's okay. Let go and let God. Turn to someone and say, let go. Let God. Let God. That's right. Here's the last, the, the quick, last of the quick ones I want to bring across. Our purpose in life is usually not found in one sentence. Your purpose isn't found. You can't define your purpose that you have in life in one sentence. It's made up by a series of decisions. Decisions that you make every day. Okay? And, that, and those decisions lead to situations and opportunities. You getting this? And those situations and opportunities 
is where we are tested by God. And if we pass the test, you're prepared for His work. Isn't that good? So we go, I'm going to go back again so you get it. Because I know I, was, I just said a mouthful. It's decisions, daily decisions that you make. Daily decisions. Daily walking close to Him. Daily decisions that open up opportunities in situations. In those situations and opportunities is where we are tested. That is where your purpose comes out of, is those opportunities and situations, how you react to them. Okay. Did you get that? Say, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so, our purpose and our decisions must be founded in wisdom, right? How many agrees with that? Your decisions, your daily decisions have to be founded in wisdom. Okay, so now we're getting to the big points. You ready for them? Here we go. First one, our purpose is found in the Word of God. I'm telling you, Kathleen sang about it, and she was right on, man. The brother that just spoke and said, when God gives a word, and it's, you can stand on it, that was a word. And it, I love it because the Holy Spirit strengthens the word, the message that's coming forth this morning. Because you need to understand, there is nothing rock, nothing. Like the rock solid word of God that, that, that's in your life. You need to get it in your life. Amen. Most people, most people want to hear this. They want a self-help book. They want to know if you say, well, what's my purpose? They want to give you a, they want you to give them a self-help book. Something that's easy. Six ways to success. Right. They want something quick. They want something fast. They want a fast track to my purpose. But there is no fast track to your purpose. Amen. They want 30 days to total transformation. That doesn't happen that way. It's daily walking through the Word of God. I'm telling you, you there is nothing better than the Word of God. <laughs> and I know a lot of people are probably thinking, right now you're probably thinking, he was going to talk about my purpose. I was all ready for this new thing that's coming out. Not another talk about the Word of God. But I've got nothing better. I've got nothing better to talk to you about. The word of God. I'm telling you. I, I was asked this week. What's your job as a pastor? What's your job as a pastor? And I, I, my answer is. And it's probably shock you. It's a lot different than the American view of a pastor. What I view my job as. My job is to study and to pray. And get the word from the Lord. For you all. For me. So that you may be equipped. To go out there. And do the work of the Lord. Did you get that? That's, and the greatest care I can give you. The greatest care I can give you. Is to get you hungry for the word of God. That's the greatest care I can give you. I can come build your house. I can do a lot of different things for you. But the greatest thing I can do for you. Is get you hungry for the word of God. Get you a foundation inside of you. Amen. That's true. That's my definition of my job job title. Probably different than what you thought. I suppose, I thought you were supposed to be there every time I called. I, I, I'll, try, I'll try to be everything I can be for you. But the greatest thing I'm going to try to be for you is get you hungry for the word of God. Amen. That's it. There's no greater care I can do as a pastor. Hebrews 4. I'm going to give you some word. We were talking about the word. I'm going to give you some word. This is, this is how important the Word of God. If you want to find your purpose in life, you need to get into the Word of God. If you want to find your purpose in life, you need to get into the Word of God. Listen to these scriptures. I've got several. Hebrews 4.12, it says this, For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and the spirit, between the joint and the marrow. It exposes the innermost thoughts and desires. That's what the Word of God does. If you want to know between your innermost thoughts and desires, get in the Word of God. It'll cut through the chase. It'll cut through all the junk of this world. And it'll show you exactly who you are, where you are, and what you're to do. Your purpose is found in the Word of God. Amen? 
2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is, and is useful to teach us. Say, teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us. Say, corrects us. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us. Say, teaches us again. Teaches us to do what is right. You want to know your purpose? You want to be taught for your purpose? Get in the word of God. God uses it, here, verse 17, I haven't finished with it yet. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. What does he use to, to prepare and equip his people for his purpose? That was pretty weak. What's he use? The word. There's no, this is, this is, this is the best thing I can give you this morning. If you come ready for me to, to shout and spin off this stage, it's not going to happen just yet. I'm going to give you the word. Amen. You'll never be prepared without the preparation of the gospel. Boy, that's good. Psalms 119, 105 says this. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a, and a light to my path. A light to my path. If I don't have a light, I'm going to trip over something. Amen. Psalms 119, 9. Listen to me, young people. This is it. This is a verse for you. You can, you can grab hold of this. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying the word. By obeying the word. By obeying your words, what it says. James 1, But just don't listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. The word of God is it. I'm telling you, you want to find your purpose, get in the word of God. Get into it. 11, Luke Luke eleven twenty eight. Jesus replied. Jesus said this, but even more blessed are all who hear the word and put it into practice. Put it into practice. Hear it. Listen to it. Handle it. Put it into practice. Amen. Matthew seven twenty four. Anyone who listens to my teaching and is and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds his house on a solid rock. The word of God is our foundation. Somebody said about it this morning. I think you said it, Mela. The word of God is our foundation. Amen? If you're building on any other foundation, you're going to crumble. You may not crumble just in, you know, in, in this year. You may not crumble next year. But there's coming a day where you're going to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And even if you've lived a life that the whole world said, oh, man, he was successful even till he died. But you stand before the Lord and your life wasn't built upon the word of God. It's going to crumble before the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It's going to be burned up and gone away. It's true. We've got to get the word. You've got to get it. Amen. I don't care. I don't care where you get if you get advice from the most intelligent person. I get, I get advice. They're, they're successful. I don't know how successful they, they look to the world. But if, they, if their words, what they're saying that comes out of their mouth doesn't line up with the word of God, you better run. You better run. This is a word for all, all of us. All of us. Okay? Many churches have lost their purpose. Many churches have lost their purpose by following successful looking people that are spewing out wrong doctrines. That's opposition to the world word. Anything that's in opposition to the word. And the word isn't up for personal interpretation. Do you get that? Well, I see it this way. Or you see it this way. Well, it's okay. It's not up for personal interpretation. The word interprets itself. It stands all by itself. When Joshua was on the bank and, and, the, and, the, and the angel came. I love using this. Remember the, it said the angel of the Lord came. And Joshua was about ready to go in across the Jordan. And, and the angel appeared. And he looks at him. And you know, Joshua, you think that Joshua was a man of God. I remember him as being a man of God. He's the one that said, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. I mean, he's a, he's a godly man. He looks at the angel of the Lord and says, who are you for? 
Who are you for? You for them or you for me? And the angel of the Lord looks at him and goes, I'm on the Lord's side. I don't know what side you're on or their side they're on. I'm on the Lord's side. And that's the way the word of God is. It's on God's side. You understand that? You can't use the word of God to whip somebody. Amen? You can't personal interpret this thing and say, I've got a verse for you. I've had that happen to me. It don't feel too good. You ever had that? I've got a verse for you. <laughs> yeah. It don't work that way. It stands on its own. It stands on its own. Amen. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says this. It says, For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Isn't that good? You want to find your purpose, get into the word of God. I have no other shortcuts for you. The greatest thing, I'll say it again, the greatest care I can give you as a pastor is get you hungry for the word of God. For the bread of life. The bread of life. All life begins at the word of God. All life begins when God spoke, it happened. When God spoke, it happened. You get it? The word of God spoke everything into existence. It's the word of God. That's where life begins. That's where life begins for me. Is the word of God. You can't be saved without the word of God. You can't. You're begat by the word. It's that seed. The word is the seed that's planted into your life. And that seed grows. The will of God begins with the word of God. The will of God begins with the word of God. Do you believe that? I believe it. You need to, you need to believe it more. <laughs> Get it down inside of you. You'll never be a great pianist if you never practice. Right? You'd never be a great ball player, a baseball player, if you never picked up a baseball. Larry loves baseball. Right? Never be a great baseball player if you don't pick up a baseball. Well, let me tell you what, you'll never fulfill God's purpose in your life if you never pick up the Bible. If you never handle it. It's true. Here's my second point. You ready? The second one, first one is the word of God. The second one is the voice of God. The voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. If you're going to fulfill God's purpose in your life, you've got to listen for the voice of God. You've got to listen for it. You've got to listen to it. You've got to obey it. The Holy Spirit is important. Man, we preached it, preached it last week, and you could feel it, couldn't you? You could feel the Holy Spirit moving, and it was great. But I'm telling you, you've got to personally hear the voice of God. Personally. I can't hear Him for you. You've got to hear Him. I can give you a word on Sunday and Wednesday, and Sunday night I, I'll do my best to... to, to Bring my input along with you guys, okay? But for you, if you only get fed three times a week, you're going to starve to death. You got to hear the word of God. You got to hear the voice of God for yourself. And I want you to understand, the Holy Spirit is not the foundation. Jesus is the foundation. The word of God is the foundation. But you know what the Holy Spirit does? He tells you all about that foundation. He'll give you the greatest tour of the foundation. Amen? He'll tell you how every stone was laid in that foundation. That's what I love about it. And that's why we have to have the Holy Spirit. When you don't have a Holy Spirit in the church, it's dry. Dry. Dead. Amen? Holy Spirit gives you power to be a witness. You want to know what your purpose is? You're to be a witness. A witness. You're to witness what God has done for you in your life. Amen. And you need courage. Courage in these last days to stand before a sinful, demonic filled world. And it's going to get worse. As the time grows near. And, and if you were here Wednesday, I preached on it. That we're, the last days is coming. I'm telling you, we are so close. I just know that I know that I know. And demonic activity is on the rise because Satan knows it's his last hour. It's his last hour. Might be his last 15 minutes. I believe that. 
If a day for the Lord is like a thousand years, maybe his last five minutes. Hey, amen, I believe that. And just like the Word of God has to be present when you're saved, the Holy Spirit has to be present when you're saved. No man comes to the Father unless he's drawn by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. And the Holy Spirit does not stand by himself. He stands right beside the Word of God. He stands right beside the Word of God. Most people, when they picture the, being led by the voice of God, they, they, they view it like this. Come here, Jen. Oh, yeah. Put you on the spot. The whole, they, when they feel like they're being led by the Holy Spirit, they feel like the Holy Spirit's going to bring them. He's going to drag them. He said, see this right here? You need to pray for her. Did you see right here? Oh, yeah. Here we go. This, is, this one needs it. This one needs it. Just rebuke that right there. And this, this, and that, and that might be all right. You know, and it might happen like that for you. Yeah, don't pull backwards. I see how that works. But you know what the Holy Spirit will do more than any time thing? What, what he's done for me in my life, most of the time what he does is he comes and he, pull, he, he just gently leads me. And he leads me to the foundation. And he says, this is what you need to do. And then if I go astray, he brings me back. And he leads me back to the foundation. I'm telling you. That is what the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Lord, most of the time, the Holy Spirit, when he speaks to me, he speaks to me and he brings me back to the word. And if, and if there's something that's speaking to you that goes in opposition to the word, it's not the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that. Thank you. And she wonderful. She's wonderful, isn't she? Yeah, that's right. You got a golf clap from somebody. I don't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> here's some more great pastoral care i want to give you okay <laughs> you're going to say man we grow tough hides around the Cal crossroads cowboy church you want to hear the holy spirit's voice shut your mouth hey amen if you love the Lord, give me a big aha. There you go. Shut your mouth. If you want to hear the Holy Spirit, you really want to hear the Holy Spirit, shut your mouth. Shut off the TV. Shut off the social media. Amen? Because I promise you this. The Holy Spirit is speaking. I promise you the Holy Spirit is speaking and He wants to speak to you but he can't speak to you because all the other stuff is so loud. Amen. You've drowned him out. And I'll tell you this. The mark of a true child of God. You say, I've heard people say, you talk about hearing the Holy Spirit. It's, it's the mark of a true child of God. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And another they will not follow. The brother just said it this morning, didn't he? It's in my notes right here. Didn't plan this. We didn't talk this. But it's true. My sheep know my voice. And another they will not follow. And you say, well, I've never heard the voice of God. Yes, you have. There's over 700,000 words written right here. That's the voice of God. 700,000, over 700,000 words in this book right here. That is all the word of God. And when you've heard it, when you've listened to it, you've read it. And you get it down in your spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks, you know exactly what it is. It's like when my mama calls me on the phone, right? She don't, I don't have to say, who is this again? Who is this again? But a lot of you don't know, the, you've never read the word, you don't know, got enough of it in you. So you, when the Holy Spirit speaks, you're like, who is this again? I'm giving you a word this morning. You want to find the purpose for your life. Amen. You just, you just, you just get into the word. You get, you get to know him. I wish sometimes I had a little buzzer up here, a little ding, ding. When I, when I hear the voice of the Lord going off, I want to go ding, 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 ding. That's it right there. Someone else, but eh, that's not it. We grow thick hides, remember? Thick hides. Love you guys. Amen. <laughs> 
<laughs> and see, when you recognize the voice of the Lord, when, you, when you've studied the word and you've got it in you, because there's a place that you get it. There's a place that you get to when you've heard the word and you've read the word that you know the voice of the Lord. He doesn't speak against his nature. Someone says something that's against God's nature is like, no, that's not God. That's not God. Amen. I believe that, don't you? Here's my third point. Defining your purpose. Defining your purpose for life. This is very, very important. And I know that I know that we, uh, it seems like we've been hammering on this. But I can't help it. This is what the Lord gave me, right? Humility is key for walking in God's purpose. And your purpose. Humility is key. When Jesus fulfilled God's purpose, because you understand Jesus fulfilled God's purpose like no other person. Do you understand that? But what does the Bible say about him? He humbled himself. If you're going to fulfill God's purpose in your life, you've got to humble yourself. Amen? You can't do the will of God in your will too. You can't do it. It takes real humility to be transferred, trans, trans, you know, what am I going to say? Trans, yes, transformed. That's it. Into God's image. Real humility. Amen. Let me tell you what humility isn't just for a second. Real quick. Shyness isn't humility. That's, that's sneaky pride. Shyness is sneaky pride. I know because I dealt with that. Amen. Low self-esteem. See, the world thinks low self-esteem, shy people. Oh, they're so humble. No, that's sneaky pride. Sneaky pride. Amen? Someone that lets, the world looks at someone that lets everybody run over them as humble. No, that's not it either. That's a fear of man. That's not of God either. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? Real humility is putting God first in your values and obeying God first out of everything. God's word is the final word in your life and the final authority. Pride is self-centered. It's all about me. But real humility is found in the words of Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. Do you understand that? And I'll be honest with you. My warning buzzer goes off. That Remember that buzzer I was telling you about? Eh, that's not of God. I feel the Holy Spirit cringe inside of me when I hear people demand things of God. Hear me this morning. This is important. You don't demand things of God. The Bible says this. He says, if you come before my throne and you ask anything in my son's name, the keys in asking, you don't demand. Amen. Hear me. That's that's important. When I hear that somebody demand it, I feel I feel pride. I'll just be honest with you. It's like my little warning buzzer goes off and says, that's pride. That's pride. That's pride. You ask. There's nothing wrong with asking. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it'll be open. It didn't say demand and you'll have it. Amen. That's good. That's good. I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing, all right? I promise you, I'm closing. <laughs> you know, when you're prime for, for God's purpose to be fulfilled in your life, when you're prime, am, are you ready to hear this? If you're ready, say I am. Okay. When you have this kind of attitude right here, I'm going to be the best at where I am right now. I'm going to be the best at where I am right now. I don't get mad at where I'm at. Amen. When you have this kind of attitude, I don't get mad at where I'm at. I don't look at others. I don't focus on circumstances. I don't, I don't get disappointed where I'm at. I don't think that God don't love me anymore. Or love me any less. But I'm going to be the very best at where I am right now. When, you're, when you have that attitude. When you really fill those shoes. God, you are prime, prime. Prime time for God to use you for his purpose. Amen? Probably didn't want to hear that, did you? But that's the way it is. I'm not going to say you're going to stay there all your life. 
There's seasons. Remember we talked about let's open this thing up with seasons. You may not like the season you're in, but you be the best at where you're at in that season through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Amen? And, and you say, well, give me a verse for that. I, I, I ain't got verses. I got, I, got, I got whole life examples in the Bible. I got Joseph. Joseph. Remember Joseph? Men just got done studying this. He said, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best slave I can be. I'm going to be the best prisoner I'm going to be. I'm going to be the best at where I'm at. And you know where it got him? Second in the kingdom. Y'all, that's just one. No, no. How about Daniel? Daniel was, was taken away from his parents and put into, into captivity. And you know what he said? I'm going to be the best at where I'm at. Right now, I'm going to be the best at where I'm at. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to put my feet down. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be faithful. And you know where it took him? Second in the kingdom. He really, they, both these guys actually really run the kingdom. The other guy was just really a face. They didn't, he didn't have the wisdom that these guys had. Well, that's just two. How about David? How about David in the Bible? In the, he, he's anointed as king, right? Man, you get anointed as king as a teenager. You know, teenagers, if we just matured to his, their age, remember that? That's good. But if, you, you know, like he's anointed as a teenager, and now he's hiding in a cave with 600 men. But you know what he purposed in his heart? I'm going to be the best at where I am right now. Right now, I'm going to be the best. And you know where it got him? The king. He was the king. The greatest king that Israel ever had other than Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's true. And that, there's just, I could go on and on, but we, we're running out of time. I love it, don't you? But that's the attitude you've got to have. You've got to have the attitude of then some. I'm going to do my job and then some. God blesses those kind of people. <laughs> Not the people that well, I'm going to wait till I get asked. Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> no, I'm going to do my job and then some. Amen. It's good. And I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some examples. But like I said, we're running out of time. I'm going to do my job. We got a generation of young and I love you guys. We got a bunch, we got a bunch of a generation, maybe not you guys, right? We're not going to start saying this church, right? That says, that's not my job. That's not my job. You get somebody else to do that. Well, we got it. We that, forget that generation. We got a bunch of old people that say that too. Don't you get, don't you feel bad? It's not my job. We'll let somebody else do that. I'm going to do my job and then some. My job and then some. Amen. With that attitude, you'll fulfill God's purpose for your life. It's good, isn't it? It's good.